I never thought I'd be reviewing a Segway on this channel and I never thought if I did review a Segway that it would actually be a robot lawnmower. Right, we will get back to the main unit in just one moment, but first let's look at all the other things that come with the unit. So, you will get a charging transformer, obviously you need to get power to it somehow, and you need to get a transmission to it so it knows where it's going. So we've got a cable here which goes up to the exact fusion locating system, and that sits on top of this pole, which goes in the ground with this nasty trident spike thingy. We also have some screw type pegs to hold this thing down to the ground some other pegs here we've got these location pegs now you stick these in the ground when you're not using the thing so if you take it up for winter because you're not going to be mowing the lawn for a couple of months then you push these in place of where you would stick the screws in the four corners i do believe of this base unit and that way you know where it is for next time so you don't have to reset all your parameters for your mower to know where the hell it's going. You also have a set of spare blades here, looks like two sets of spare blades actually. And it's all sitting on top of this unit here which is the base unit that it charges from. The mower will dock in here and charge up when it needs to. I also need to download the app for it so that we can set all the parameters that we need so it doesn't go mowing over my chickens. So the app was nice and easy to install, just bung in your email, set up a password, tick a box, done, it was all quick and easy. So now that I've got that going it's asking me to register the device um, but I think I need to set up where the device lives first so that's what we're going to do now. I've got everything out here ready to go. We've got the base, got the antenna, We've got the, the quick start guide there. There's a piece of cardboard as well in the box that's sitting just there that you need to make sure you pop out of the box, which clips onto the back, sticks on the back just here, and gives you a six inch or 150 millimeter guide for going around so you don't crash into things. You just need that during the setup, I do believe. So I'm starting to map out the new area. And you do this by walking along behind it with your phone. Just get a little bit out from that edge a bit. You want to be about 150 from the edge or so, that's why you've got that piece of cardboard you can see on the right wheel there at the back so that it doesn't hit anything and you'll still have to go around with your weed eater. It's a little tricky to control if you're not used to controlling things on your phone. <laughs> and I'm going rather slow because yeah, I'm not good at it and there we go, I've just knocked off my cardboard thing. We're going to turn here and we're going to head towards the camera person and up this slope. Let's put a bit of bit of oomph into it. Can you get up the hill? Look at that. Look at that. And we'll turn here. Oh. Now, got a little bit too close there. I need to erase something. Okay, so that's how you erase. You hold down the erase button on the controls and as, the, as long as you hold it down, it will keep backing up until you get to a point where you're back on, your, back on track again. And we'll now straighten her up and get going. Now ideally, you want your antenna set up as far away from trees and anything overhanging the top of it as possible so it gets a good clear signal to the sky. But I'm putting it a little bit under a tree here and next to this bush. Uh, but hopefully it'll be okay. Weak GPS signal again. So I had a bit of a problem at that first location with the signal to the mower. So I have gone and gotten this extension cable on the right and the extension kit there is so that you can add it onto like the roof of your house so that you will have a nice clear signal. And I'm just going to now screw it onto the ground. It comes with pegs that are like screws and it comes with an allen key for you to wind those into the ground. So we want the symbol on here to be flashing blue or green. Uh, if it's a yellowy orange color then you might need to shift your antenna to get a better reception. Basically this is the reception light so it'll tell you whether it's good enough to function or not. If it's red, well take it back for servicing. Let's turn her on. 
Okay, she's flashing yellow, she's gone red. I think that's because the segway is not actually on it. Let's slide the mower onto it and see what happens. It's a bit hard to see in this bright sun, but hopefully you can see that this is red. And I'm now gonna slide the mower on. The lights on the mower have come on. We've got a flashing green light now on the mower itself. And the light down here has now gone green. So we are in action. So after clicking that I want to add a device. It tells me all about a vision fence and how that works. And the vision fence on the unit is this thing here. So that basically will look out for things on your lawn. A flower pot, a soccer ball, whatever happens to be, you know, something your kids have left on there, a toy. Anything bigger than around 100 millimeters or four inches in size. <laughs> so now it will go around me. Oh, good thick bit of grass there. And then come back around behind. And get back on track. That fence detect there will help realize where edges are so that it doesn't matter if you haven't got perfect reception it should still stop it from going over the edge or crashing into anything fingers crossed next up it says wait until the charging light is blue just down here we've got a blue light and the mower is not attached to the unit which it isn't and then click blue light is on push the mower into the charging station pair the mower with your phone via Bluetooth. Connected. Woohoo! Tap start to run mower. You've now got to hook it up to a Wi-Fi, so you have to have the unit within range of the Wi-Fi in your house, which is a tad annoying because I wanted to set this thing up with a power station out in the middle of a paddock to give you a demonstration, but I might not be able to do that. Right, there is no map yet. Go ahead and create a map so that the mower knows where to work the areas to stay away from and move smoothly on the lawn. But it'll tell me how big the area is once we're finished, which is pretty cool. It'll give you the square meter of what you've just mapped out. And all this long grass around the edge, you will still have to hit with a weed eater, just like you do with your normal mower. And then there we go, back to our starting position. It knows that we've got back to the starting position. It now says done on the screen. Where you going, buddy? So this is the area I have just mapped out. It's 125 square meters it says here. That's, it's worked all that out for me. And we're ready to go now. And so I'm gonna push mow now. My camera person is gonna turn around and you're gonna see the mower do its thing. We're currently set on 60 millimeters cut height. Um, I might need to lower that once we get going. We'll see how it goes. Let's go. I should of course have taken off that cardboard marker there, but hey. She'll be right. Now I've got it set down to 35 mil, and this is real thick kaikuya, so I can hear it crunching away. Although it's still extraordinarily quiet. It's ridiculously quiet. You're not gonna have this annoying you while it's cutting the lawn. Ooh, got a bit, bit tough for it there. Might have to bring it up five mil. You can adjust the height between 60 mil down to 25, I think, in five millimeter increments. And you will hear the blade start up and stop all the time when it turns and stuff. It turns it off for a moment so it doesn't damage your lawn or cause any other issues, presumably. Anyway, let's just watch it for a bit, shall we? quiet if everybody had one of these in the neighborhood it'd be so nice on the weekend wouldn't it because you're never going to hear this thing from your neighbor's place it's really working hard at the moment it can cut thicker grass better than i thought it would considering how tiny the blades are the 
blades are so small. And remember the cutting area is only the width of that round area there. That's where the blades are. And they're not like lawnmower blades, they're just tiny little razor blades. A bit like you might have on a craft knife or something, they're not big heavy things, so they're nowhere near as dangerous as a real lawnmower. Okay, Houston, we have a problem. He's a little bit stuck, he's trying a few different things here. He hasn't worked it out yet. I think it'll send me a message if it gets stuck, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. There is a bit of a dip here, which even a standard ride on lawnmower can't get close enough to it because it gets stuck. So, it was an interesting test for this thing, but yeah, I'm going to have to make an island around here. You can make islands around things that you don't want it to go near. If you had a table there, for instance, you could just make an island around it so it doesn't go anywhere near your table. Or, for in this instance, a septic tank breather. Now, I'm going to test what happens when you pick it up. See there, we've got a red light come on. Not happy. So as you can see, it's got safety features built in. So if you lift it up like I have here, it will not run. So I'm gonna set it going again. Push the old mo button. And away he goes. But what if perhaps you don't have access to power out in the middle of your garden, or you are on an off-grid property or a tiny home somewhere and you don't have electricity outside easily available, well, you could always run it on an EcoFlow. And if you run it off an EcoFlow with a solar panel like this, then you never have to pay petrol again to mow your lawn. Free power to power your mower. How cool is that? Someone's gonna mow your lawns for free and it isn't you. It's this little guy. It's pretty energy efficient, only using around 90 watts to charge. Now once this thing either runs out of battery or finishes mowing, it will of course come back to its base here which is just temporarily set up. I've only set up a small area on this property because this thing is rated for 800 square meters, whereas this property is much, 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 much bigger than that. We're talking over 3,000 square meters, so just of lawn, <laughs> just in front of us. But it's a very cool little thing, takes a bit of setting up can be a bit tricky getting everything aligned. You've got to set up your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth. The Bluetooth you only need on the phone while you are setting it up. Doesn't need Bluetooth sort of running all the time because you're not going to be near it with your phone all the time. You just use that to set it up. Um, and then you've got Wi-Fi and the GPS. So once you've got all those things aligned, um, yeah, it'll do it for you. You can set it up with a regular mowing schedule. So you can set it to mow every second, third day, whatever you want and it will just automatically do it unless of course it's pouring with rain and you've got the rain sensor turned on then it might skip a day and let it dry off because mowing in the wet as you know nowhere near as good but you want to mow regularly with this thing you don't want the grass getting long else it will struggle you'll have to mow it with a real lawnmower again but anyway if this was the first time watching one of my videos thanks for watching and I will see you all again Another day with another video and another tool that runs on a battery, just like this fancy little mower. Cheers guys.